I was just looking at hepatitis and hepatitis serology. Uh, I mean, it can be difficult to spot uh, clinically, but in any EMQ, you look for the risk factors such as um, people exposed to viruses, uh, toxins, uh, alcohol, or risk of autoimmune, such as having other autoimmune conditions can lead to hepatitis. Um, symptoms can be very nonspecific, as with any viral illness, it could be a flu like thing. And you have to look at the duration of time between, um, I might say, was exposed to shellfish, and then two days later developed this right upper quadrant pain. So there's definitely a chronicity type component when looking at these questions. They can present with jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, and hepat hepatomegaly. This right upper quadrant pain can be. She takes, um, you can get a true like liver pain is when you have expansion into the liver capsule and that will cause some form of pain uh, and you get that in acute onset hepatosplenomegaly or hepatomegaly rather. Um, but only less than 5% were going to present in, in following liver failure meaning a flap, encephalopathic uh, and all the other signs and symptoms that you see in, in liver failure. If the symptoms progress for longer than six months, this would be known as a chronic type hepatitis. So we're just going to go through the uh, hepatitis viruses themselves. So you have hepatitis A, which is an RNA virus. It has an acute IgM and laid an IgG component. Um, and the incub incubation period is short. It's about two weeks. There's no chronic uh, problem with it and the root is fecal oral. So it will be classically be people eating um, some shellfish by you know, in a dodgy open sewer, and um, we go on to develop um, this this uh, rapid onset um, self-limiting uh, hepatitis. There's hepatitis B, which is the big one. It's big because it's DNA. The other one's RNA. Um, it's spread perientral, which means basically that if you share needles, um, bodily fluids, tattooing, blood transfusion, IVDU, intravenous drug use, then that will unfortunately can lead you with hepatitis B. Um, and the hepatitis B and C are almost 200 times more virulent than HIV. So you know, when you do get a needle stick injury, I've had a couple, and the main risk is hepatitis, not usually HIV, which is obviously the big one that you fear about. Um, early on, the surface antigen is going to be the first thing that is going to be positive. Um, and then the core antigen, so HBE antigen, uh, tells you that you're uh, infective. is an element of how infective you are. Uh, 10 to 15% will go on to be chronic. And as we said earlier, chronic means over six months in duration. Hepatitis C is an RNA. Um, it can be quite difficult to detect, but you use auto, uh, sorry, antibody um, enzymes and uh, PCR. Um, and has a similar mode of transmission as hepatitis B. It has a shorter um, incubation period of one to two months, um, and but has a more C for chronic and C for HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma, um, which is what it can unfortunately cause. Uh, D is incomplete. It needs to go along with hep B, um, so it doesn't uh, exist by itself. And hepatitis E is again an RNA uh, virus and it's in, found in pandemics in Southeast Asia. It's very dangerous in pregnancy. Uh, it causes a lot of similar to hepatitis A, um, but it's usually self-limiting. So the virology for hepatitis B is the surface antigen. It's the first to become positive. It persists for three to four months. And if it's longer than six months, it means you've got a chronic carrier status. And it indicates that there's an infection. And if it continues, it indicates that you could be chronic sufferer if you've not been able to clear the virus or um, been started on any antivirals. The core antigen is second to become positive uh, and it's the first to become negative. So you'll see on, later on the diagram that it, it plateaus quickly and then becomes negative and it indicates that you're infective and you should be aware. Um, Anti-HB uh, surface antigen basically means that you've recovered and that you have a degree of immunity. And that will take, hopefully, that happens once you clear the uh, surface antigen and then you have antibodies to that surface antigen. An anti-HB core antigen, so both E and C mean that it's core antigen. And this is unique and it's the only positive marker during what we call the window phase. And the window phase is what you'll see on the serology, 
which is when the surface antigen becomes negative, but it's before the anti-surface antigen becomes positive. So it's, it means it's just before you become immune, you might have this one um, positive on your serology. And so this is it in a, a diagrammatic pur uh, purposes. So you can see um, surface antigen, so HBSAG in the light blue, is the first to um, peak after a couple of weeks. Um, and then, then it goes down slowly, whereas the core, so HBE, AG, um, indicated by the gold dash, goes up second, but it then becomes negative pretty quickly. And then you see what is known as the window, or, which is better name, named as the core window, and this is when the surface antigen is becoming negative at about five months, and your anti-HB surface antigen is about to become positive. So it's the only thing that you'll be able to detect. Uh, at this stage. And you can see on the top line there's a good diagram which tells you what the important diagnostic tests are, so incubation, surface antigen will be positive, then, the, then uh, the cores will start to become positive and then hopefully you'll clear them and have some uh, anti-HB uh, surface antigen and that means that you've got hopefully some level of immunity. Uh, we'll cover this again in the um, uh, microbiology stuff it's going to be a little bit difficult to comprehend but unfortunately you just have to sort of stare at the diagram until it starts to make sense it's sort of like a magic eye trick. Um, autoimmune hepatitis um, it's just covered here for complete sake it's young females between 15 and 40 uh, and they have anti-nuclear antibody ANA positive. They might have other autoimmune conditions and they also have anti-smooth muscle antibody positive so ANA and SMA can be positive, they can be positive in a few other conditions as well, which makes it sometimes a little bit difficult to diagnose, but they will have um, elevated uh, AST and ALT with a moderate to severe hepatitis-like picture, which you usually don't get in some of the other uh, autoimmune conditions. And the other thing is that if you treat it with steroids, um, if steroids don't work, you unfortunately have to escalate to different types of DMARs, azathioprine, methotrexate, um, and things like that. Um, it should respond to it, whereas obviously other conditions causing hepatitis is not steroid um, sensitive. So treatments, the only one two that you really need to be aware of is ribavirin, uh, and that stops RNA synthesis and viral mRNA capping. Uh, it's a nucle nucleoside inhibitor, and it inhibits RNA viruses. So I mean, it's pretty uh, handy in helping you clear the virus. And then PEG interferon. So interferon is a protein um, which the body makes naturally when they have viruses and it works um, in fighting viruses in, and also immunomodulation. Um, interferon has got a very short half-life, but if you pop some PEG on it, which someone in a pharmaceutical company has done, it lasts much longer and can help you fight the virus even better. 